Terry Jacobson, Marketing Art Fleet. So today we're going to be talking about um, some cool stuff, actually. I'm kind of excited. Um, so today we're going to be looking at multi-channel marketing. Uh, this is part of a blog post that I'm doing where we talk about kind of the top 15 websites, how you're going to be doing stuff. And in the interest of keeping this down to like non, you know, epic proportions i'm just going to kind of touch on some thoughts that i had about the different channels about your business or our business because i'm going to be looking at my stuff and then at um uh, uh client stuff and kind of giving you an idea of what types of things you need to consider when you're looking at being a big content creator and producing across multiple channels and it doesn't even necessarily have to be your own content it can be content from other people because some of the stuff that I'm going to show you is actually things that I'm doing that uh, I'm sharing other people's stuff. So let's get started. So number one, I wanted to show you, and we talked about this a little bit in the last blog post and video, um, that I got like 3,000 hits last month, almost 3,000 hits last month on um, Thanksgiving quotes, which kind of came out of the blue. That's the most I've ever had through search for a specific term in a month. Um, and it was really, really cool. And I liked it. So I want to do that more. And I also want to be able to capitalize on it. So first off, I went to my website and I didn't actually have um, a link on my navigation to quotes. So I put that in. Uh, God bless them. I don't think that people are finding it by coming to my navigation, but why not? Why make it harder um, on myself or on other people, um, considering how cool it is to, to have quotes to share? So um, I'm just going to make this easier. So here's my quote po thing. And um, I was I was looking at my webmaster tools and I really wanted to take a peek at why this was did so well. And I think it's because people are looking for business quotes, um, things that were acceptable to share for business. And my site is very business related. So that definitely was a good, good, good fit um, together. I mean, like that was just a really good fit. So then I was thinking about where am I putting this on social media? And I was all happy because I had um, my Thanksgiving quotes. And if you go to my boards, I had even moved it up and, and moved it around so it wasn't stuck in the bottom. And, you know, I could take a peek and see if if, if I got some traffic for, um, for that. <clears throat> um, so Pinterest... Pinterest definitely was up a little bit. Um, it's ridiculous. My Google is 11,000. My Pinterest is 300. Um, obviously something I'm going to be working on. Um, but that that said, I wondered, oh my gosh, I wonder if I did a really good job. And I thought, oh, I did a good job. So I went to my Thanksgiving quotes. And this is this year's, so those aren't, those aren't in there. Um, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute. I started doing a really good job, doing a good job. So this starts this year's. Um, so I went down through and I'm like, oh, I got a bunch of them. And then I noticed I don't have from here down. Um, so, so honestly, one of the strategies I could have used for content marketing for the month of November would be to post one of these quotes a day to schedule that out through Hootsuite using the pictures and including the quote and, and making a big thing of it. Um, Sometimes when you're a big content creator, it's easy to have a lot of stuff. I wrote another post with quotes this month or this year, and so I only got three or four hundred hits on that one. Um, so total, I'm looking at well over three thousand. Um, but then I was looking at I haven't done any Christmas quotes, so I'm going to start doing Christmas quotes this year. Um, but but it's more like farming than it is like um, hunting because I can put up my Christmas quotes page, but the the page from last year is what actually got all those that traffic so anyways you want to keep keep an eye on your stuff um you know obviously i need to get those quotes onto this pinterest i have 1200 followers so it's not insubstantial so it's definitely worth um you know i don't know putting them on there since i have them anyways uh sometimes i just annoy myself okay so today let's look at um twitter for me because i tend to love twitter unrealistically a lot like um just a lot and and compared to i get a lot of 
um, so if you were to look at my my sources, right, we were looking at sources, Twitter is not one of my big ones, although it would be a lot better because it does have um, Twitter broken up into like mobile, um, so it would be better than 75. It's still not setting the world on fire. Um, but I get so much talky talk and access to people I wouldn't normally have and things like that, and this isn't the post for this, but um, Twitter's really good to me. And so I wanted to kind of show you some of the things that I think are real considerations for Twitter in that I have Pterodactyl, which is old. Um, she has 18,000 followers and um, it's just an old account. And so one of the reasons why I have 18,000 is because I got them early on when it wasn't so busy. Um, but it's gen general. It's like everything I do, you know, not just one kind of thing. It's everything. Um, so it's kind of a mishmash. Ebook nerds, when I started writing ebook ebooks, so I've written about 20 some ebooks. They're all nonfiction and they're all about marketing. Imagine that. Or sales. Um, those are way more specific. So this guy, I mean, yeah, I'm following a bunch of people, but I have 575 followers and I've really never like after the first day um, I set it up really paid attention to it other than you know I check my notifications of course to see who's doing it but I get a ton of repins and people love this account I mean they tweeted a tweet and people are following me and they retweet my tweets and more people follow me and they add me to lists like Amazon influencers and and, and the nice thing is that I put all my crap up there. So this isn't even about ebooks. Um, this is just an account that mostly talks about ebooks. Um, so, so I will say that I feel like that some of these really specific, you know, um, general specific things are very important to have because when you have a theme, then people can do things with it. Like, so I know for a fact that um, there's several paperly, there are these funny little newspapers that Twitter makes, paperly people that have used my ebook nerds because they know that mostly it's, uh, I would say, 90% just about self-publishing, book publishing, things like that. Um, so it's really kind of interesting. I also have this one that's tweeting homes that has 5,500 people. Um, and this is for realtors and I don't get as much. Um, it's so funny because my 500 people on the other one um, don't give me more uh, traction than my 5,000 people, but I get all kinds of retweets and, 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 and stuff like that. Retweets, notifications. Um, I guess this is just for mine, but, but if you looked at the back of it, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Um, so it's kind of cool. Uh, uh, going on all the different channels and figuring out what to do. So let's pull up the guys. Um, so I'm going to start with the fact that they're the self-publishing podcast guys. Um, that's not the focus of their lives. They actually write fiction. They don't just talk about writing fiction. Um, so one of their things is that they really, really, really want to sell fiction books, right? Um, and we're looking at ways to do that. You know, what are their goals for social media? What are their goals for spending time creating all this content? Um, if it was just to make money, then it would definitely be in the self-publishing realm because they, uh, you know, the, the people who are looking for help on something are... Um, willing to spend money where the people who are looking for fiction are looking to be entertained and we kind of have to figure out the way to get the most exposure for them for their fiction um so it's super super exciting you guys i'm wicked excited about trying to um really dig in and figure out how to solve fiction so first steps right so we gotta get started so their sterling and stone account is is not doing great so we need to get this here but we really need to think of is this going to be their pterodactyl where it's a catch-all? It's, it's, they have different, um, <clears throat> they call them imprints. So they have a horror um, imprint. They have one that's just comedy. They have one that's for artists. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so this may be a little bit of everything with no delineation. It's just kind of the, the, the overview holding place for everything. Now, one guy I found on Twitter who's doing a really good job is Hugh Howie. Hugh Howie um, wrote a, um, a bunch of 
um, self-published books and then had a breakaway uh, hit with, um, it's called Sand, I think it's called Sand, Wool, Wool. Um, and so like he had a trailer made, he did all these things. Oh, look, uh, oh, he made a trailer. So this guy made a trailer. So Q Howie is doing a super, super good job on Twitter. I had to give him like super big bonus points. So, um, these are people that are making things for him and he's actually going and finding them and retweeting them. So see Hugh Howie retweeted. Um, so these people made a sand t-shirt and things like that. So for my guys, I told them to make Baricio, who's their serial killer, who's kind of fun. Um, I know it doesn't sound like it should be fun, but he's very fun. Um, and then this is Hugh just posted this. So he's interested in um, the tax structure in Spain, obviously. Um, but then he uh, obviously went and had lithographs done um, of his books. And then this guy tweeted Hugh because this is at Hugh Howie. So it would have only gone directly to Hugh, Hugh just because of how tw tweets are structured. Um, but how fun is that, that fans made a, made a trailer for his video. It's gotten five retweets, including Hugh. Um, so Hugh's really making me happy with this. Um, he's, uh, retweeting anytime they, they, uh, put his, his book, there's his blog post. So he's just, I mean, I'm even more in love with Hugh now because of his Twitter work. Uh, somebody who I felt like was doing a really nice job on, um, Facebook was Dean Koontz. So I can't really tell. So he's got a million and a half likes. Um, so obviously we're looking at really, really big numbers. Um, but he, whether he's doing it or whether he has a team doing it for him, I don't know enough about him to know if he's a social media guy, but this appears to be the team posting for Dean. So it looks like Dean was, was doing it. Um, and then somebody else is talking about him, which is really nice because then you're not kind of trying to play that you're Dean. Um, they're just doing shout outs. And you'll see this wasn't as widely liked as some of the other things, but 162 people liking it in three shares is no, um, no sneeze, right? Um, this one is uh, a download. So this is content, you guys. This is what people are looking for. They're looking for that kind of interaction with authors. Um, so they wrote a little extra thing, right? An ebook short from Dean Koontz. Um, and he published that directly on his website. Okay, so now I haven't gone here. So let's take a peek and see what this is. Um, so, so you're destined to be together forever. Um, well, let's try this. So we'll go to Amazon, go. Um, and it's 99 cents, so it's not even a free download. I would say that that a really good thing, if you're going to do a little extra thing like that, um, yes, selling a 99 cent book would be okay. And yeah, it's, it's good that they're reminding him about Odd Thomas because I think he's wrapping up that series now. But what would be even better is if that was a data capture and you found out everybody who loves Odd Thomas and wants the free short and then you could um, put that in your database. You could mark them as, because he's sci-fi, you could mark them as sci-fi lovers and also as people who love Odd Thomas and then do some direct marketing based on that. So I think that um, 99 cents times the bajillion people that like Dean Koontz is nothing to sneeze at, I'm sure. But um, maybe building a list would be a good idea too. So anyways, thought he did a good job. Um <sighs> It's really interesting on Pinterest because I was looking, um, the guys have given me a list of people that they like and functionally nobody's on here. Um, they're horror writers, they're, they're, they're bigger writers and, and things like that. Um, but I think it's such a missed opportunity. I mean, if you sell anything to women, anything at all, um, Pinterest is just full of women. And then when you add on top of it that, that women make 80% of the buying decision in, in homes, um, you know, they buy the Christmas presents. So they're buying the books for the, like I bought four books for my husband this year. Um, he, because my children have to buy him things. And so it's not just I'm buying them. I have to buy them for my children. So I think that Pinterest is truly a missed opportunity and I can't, um, 
I just can't understand why it's 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 so not being utilized. Uh, J.K. Rowling's is not on there, and so there are thousands and thousands and thousands of pins and boards and Harry Potters and. Um, you know, if she went on here, I just can't imagine they would go insane. Um, you know, they're just, they're, they're doing fan, fan shout outs. Um, so speaking of which, this Chuck guy seems really nice, but he, this isn't Chuck. Um, this is somebody who is taking care of it. Um, so Dennis is running it for Chuck and Chuck has 42,000, 4,200 people who are um, doing it, and he's kind of collecting the fan artwork that they've done, um, you know, the book covers, his movies. This is really, really cool. Um, oh my gosh, this is tattoos inspired by Chuck's work. So, um, you know, honestly, it's just neat. And then second off, it's, um, it's really, really effective, it looks like. Anyway, so now let's go to um, YouTube which is another one of the ones that we want to do. And the guys have a really great um, following on YouTube for their self-publishing podcast. Um, they <laughs> have horrible, horrible views for this uh, uh, Better Off Undead, which is kind of in their their funny brand, kind of half in their funny brand and half in their um, horror brand. Um, but the thing to look at is... Um, to really think about it is the the channels that seem to be doing well are the self publishing which is teaching publish teaching publishers authors duh how to um publish their books so that's very interesting and i know dave has i think dave has a huge connection to them uh somebody that's a fan of their show another author who um teaches how to do book things and is a fiction author johnny's one of the guys but i found this one really interesting um, the Horror Writer Podcast, it looks like what it is. Um, so something to really think about that I don't know yet because I haven't delved into it far enough. But is there a real value to the search? Because now we're having to start thinking about search. Um, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the, in the world. And so now we have to start thinking about if somebody's doing... Um, you know, looking, are they looking for books on, fiction books on YouTube to start? So th that may be no, like the answer may be no, but it's hard to believe that there's nobody looking for books on there. Um, and then also there's things that you can do within Amazon, which is um, a big book selling site, um, to where you could have um, a trailer, uh, you know, videos that hook to your, um, to your things so i have trailers on our on our site i have our blog posts coming up in there i have you know lists of our books and things like that and uh so so literally i mean it, i don't know we're gonna have to try to figure that out um but that's something really to look at i, I just find all of this so interesting and especially now that we're looking at something selling something that's a little bit more ephemeral selling marketing or marketing services is uh is not to say easy, but it's definitely a lot easier than trying to sell fiction, um, which I kind of feel like nobody's cracked the code on yet. So just super exciting. So hopefully this helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.